I'm Kevin Atlas, and I'm bringing some of the most successful, most inspirational human beings on this planet into your classrooms. They beat the odds, they overcame adversity, and through that, they found a way to believe. I've partnered with Varsity Brands to provide the answers, the blueprints. I have this heart that bleeds for the youth of this country, so I fight as a soldier for change, and I want us all to learn to lead, and not just to elevate ourselves, but to elevate each other. I'm looking for students nationwide to take action from what they learned from this series. This is how the world changes. It starts with you. According to Science Daily, 2.6 million American children and adolescents have diagnosed anxiety. They suffer from continual stress. I believe anxiety, at its absolute core, is fear of failure. It can feel like an elephant is sitting on your chest or you're squeezed by an anaconda, often leading to depression. However, I have found if you can cope with the fear by changing your perspective on failure, you will thrive. Otherwise, you risk holding yourself back from your potential. Jeff Bezos, creator of Amazon and the world's richest man once said, I knew if I failed, I wouldn't regret that. But I knew the one thing I would regret is not trying. Albert Einstein, arguably the smartest man to ever live, once said, a person who never made a mistake never tried anything new. So, if the world's most successful and the world's most brilliant aren't hesitant to fail, why have the rest of us adopted such a fear of? Self-efficacy is a person's belief in their ability to succeed and meet the challenges ahead. It's related to our ability to forgive personal failure, learn from the mistakes made and try again with a positive outlook. That's why I wanna introduce you to my man, Braden Marino, who has a very interesting story about finding his success through failure. Braden is a true hustler, creating a company that landed him in Forbes 30 under 30. But what's really special about him is his passion that makes continual impact worldwide. entrepreneur's first experience, I mean, a lot of the time you're kind of shooting from the hip, you don't know where it's gonna go, really, you don't have the experience or the knowledge and how to build something from scratch. And so there's that cliche phrase that, you know, you are who you surround yourself with. And I think in a lot of ways, that's absolutely true. You get energy and vibes from the people around you. So if you're around people that are hustling, that are doing good things, you naturally want to level up and be on that same wavelength as them. So seeing that and talking to them helped kind of guide me into joining an entrepreneur program and you know starting my first business right at the end of college. I started designing a custom watch and I wanted it to be like interchangeable and colorful and you know just a really unique timepiece. We had product development issues naturally. I ended up bringing on some partners at that time and I helped grow the business and you know unfortunately we got into an issue where one of the partners ended up stealing money that was coming in from the company and it just turned into a sort of a disaster to the point where I just was like listen I'm worn out from this I'm gonna move on to something else and I just shut the business down from that point in terms of being an entrepreneur if you aren't willing to fail you're never gonna make it so that's just naturally gonna happen failure is a part of the process I know you should actually embrace that failure I would just call it a critical component, almost a necessity, and know it's gonna be part of building you up to be a better entrepreneur in the future. Listen, I travel all over the country and I see all these different issues with these students and, you know, do they, a lot of them have such a hard time coping with failure, uh, coping with anxiety, which is just fear of failure. Yeah. Dude, is there a message that you would just share with students, like straight up, if you could change American youth in one way, uh, from your experiences and your failures and your, your triumphs, what yeah. would you say to them and why? I mean, the one thing they need to, you know, students should stop worrying about so much is everything that's going on around the world around them, right? In terms of, you know, maybe seeing on social media that someone else is doing really well that's their age, 
Everyone has different phases and different times in their life where they have that spark that leads them to maybe start something or to get into a job that they absolutely love and crush at. So it doesn't, you don't have to do it early on in life. It can happen way later in life. Just pay attention to yourself. Notice those times that make you tick, that get you excited and, and harness that energy and maybe use it to build something from that point. But don't worry so much about what's going on around you. I mean, there's things you can control and there's things you can't control. Just focus on, on what you can control and what you get excited about. And that's really, it's that simple. I mean, that passion will drive you very far. And I always try and tell you know, students that I talk to when we go and sell 3D printers into schools, like just pay attention to the things you get excited about. Pay attention to that, what, that drives you. So make a job out of what your passions are. That passion is going to get you through failures, problems with a business you're in or a business you started, and it's gonna help you persevere just naturally because you're so excited about it. I'm a big believer in myself, and so I hit this moment where I said, this isn't a big enough impact for me. It was very localized and we had a lot of customers around our uh, neighborhoods and around San Diego uh, coming into us and loving what we were doing, but it just, I want to do something bigger. And so I had a, I actually had a mentor at the time and he, ha he was talking to me about different things, but something specifically he mentioned to me, which really like blew my mind was, he was talking about the gold rush. And he said, the people that were successful in the gold rush weren't the people seeking gold, it was the people selling the tools to seek gold. And so that was really interesting to me. And simultaneously, I had been talking to my buddy who was getting into doing 3D printing. And I said, wow, like I've been through the process of building a product from scratch. I could potentially build a machine that could help other people build products from scratch. And so that's where two and two clicked together and I said, this technology is incredible. 3D printing is where I want to go. And so I started my very long journey uh, down to build 3D printers and share them around the world. Me and my business partner, Kobe, started literally building a 3D printer from scratch on a dining room table in a small apartment in San Diego. Had no idea what we were doing. We were on YouTube watching videos. We joined Reddit forums with people talking about how to make them and what parts to use. And we just started doing it really organically. So we built our first like product, which took us about, I would say six, six months or so to actually get up and running. Lots of trials and tribulations and failures with it. And we eventually built a machine we were really proud of. We were going into it saying, if 30 or 40 people buy 3D printers, we'll be ecstatic. And at the end of 30 days, we had 1,100 people buy 3D printers. So we raised 650 grand and it really sort of said, okay, what we're doing here is gonna, we, we have the chance to make a big impact. And in 2017, you know, we were honored in the Forbes 30 under 30, which was incredible. Something that I never even expected, obviously. And that was just one of those moments where you go, okay, wow, like I'm actually selling products around the world and people are recognizing me for doing it. And that was just a really proud moment for me. Since we've started doing the 3D printing thing, I would say about two and a half years ago, we started focusing specifically on bringing 3D printing technology into schools. It was very apparent to us that the impact it could have on students and children and preparing them to be entrepreneurs in the future or for the jobs of the future, STEM careers. That was something that we knew we could create a great solution and make a big impact. So we started focusing on elementary, middle, high schools. We've delivered 3D printers and curriculum to thousands of schools across the country. And we've seen some incredible stories come back to us once again. You know, I talked a lot about impact and not only the impact I want to make in the world with a product, but the impact that the product actually makes in other people's lives. You know, for example, a sixth grade class in a small town in Montana was able to use our 3D printer and, and print artificial coral reefs and build coral reef structures that they're gonna plant in the ocean off the coast of Costa Rica. And you talk about kids in a small town not realizing that they can make an impact in the world. And you know, having that teacher that's utilizing this technology and getting creative and you know, having these kids talk to coral reef scientists and actually wanting to make a difference and doing it, that's priceless for these kids. That's priceless for students. Anytime they have that moment, it's gonna let them go into the world and realize that they can make a big difference. That's something that motivates me each and every day. I'll deal with all the, the problems and the failures because I know that moment can exist for so many people. Brayden, you were just on a hospital bed, like fighting cancer, and I was wishing you the best, like, dude, get better. And you're like, when are we gonna shoot this Believe in You episode? Whoa, whoa, what's the cancer story? You just beat cancer? It started with me 
3D printing, using the 3D printers to make personal protective equipment for hospitals and local clinics. And so I started doing that, which led me to come up with this crazy idea that I wanted to make a face mask for nurses and doctors that had a disposable piece that you could change out because it was a lot cheaper. It could be more comfortable for nurses. And after I started building my first prototypes, I was connected through a family friend to a head and neck surgeon who, within our first Zoom call of me going through this idea I had, he had noticed that I had a lump on what appeared to be my thyroid. Uh, told me it probably was a cyst, nothing to necessarily worry about, but he said you should definitely go get it checked. So I quickly booked a doctor's appointment to get it checked and lo and behold, it ended up being thyroid cancer, so. Essentially, you created a product that you had full intentions of just helping people through impacting them and giving them the ability to create their own products and inventions. That's super creative. Yeah. And you've helped people in different continents. You've helped people with different disabilities, like being blind. You have helped so many different people in so many ways, including putting it into schools. And now you've reacted to COVID-19 by creating mass and shields for doctors and nurses because they have this shortage, obviously. Yeah. And in the process of creating something that was just much more usable, you found out you had cancer and your product in turn saved your life. Yeah. That's I mean, pretty cool. I mean, <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. I mean, I, I've talked about, you know, to you and other people a lot about how much I love 3D printing just because it can give back in so many ways. And, you know, it's, it has from the stories that I've heard from all our amazing customers, but this was extremely personal to me because it affected my life. And so to be able to, to give back and then to have such a rare moment in return, sort of give back to me and notice something that, you know, was early on that I was able to catch and handle and um, get surgery and have it removed and, you know, potentially save If you life. hadn't made those masks, if you hadn't created this product, then you might not have caught it. I might not have caught it. It might have been way further along and, you know, I don't know if I would still be standing here today or I potentially would be getting worse right now in me. I wouldn't have noticed it. Let's talk about the momentum. What is it about positive momentum that kind of spurs your success? Yeah, I mean, I always think life in general is about the momentum you build, right? So that's why I always say when you like reach a point in life where you can, it can either take you down one path, which is like being upset, for example, the cancer, right? I could have gone down one path where I was like, it's defeating me, I'm upset, like I'm depressed. Or I could go down a path where I said, listen, I'm gonna defeat this, I'm gonna crush it. I'm gonna be like in the best shape of my entire life and I'm never gonna let this come back to haunt me, right? Um, so do everything in my part to do that. And that positive mindset and that momentum will carry me to do great things in life, in my career, just naturally. So I think getting yourself in positive habits every day is important. So waking up in the morning, making your bed, doing simple things like that, brushing your teeth, making a good breakfast, eating healthy, all these positive habits will build momentum that will just, na I think naturally, no matter if you know, you know it or not, will naturally lead you to better relationships, to better life decisions, to more success in business, and I think just happier in general. How can you build positive momentum to help you accomplish your version of success? You could start with positive habits, as Braden spoke about, that will help you make positive progress little by little each day, molding you into who you want to become. Start now. Release the fear of failure. Instead, channel that energy towards making progress. Use your failures as positive momentum to springboard you towards success. The hardest part is getting started. So start.